Well, here we go. I can't believe this is happening. I'm packing up all the baby stuff. I just got a public storage. I am putting it all away. I'm done with it because we are going on this new journey of surrogacy. And I'm just clearing out all the baby things. I've got the crib, I've got the bassinet, stuff that was given to me, promo stuff, all this type of stuff. And it's all going into storage and transitioning into this new journey of mine. Let's do this. have not been updated on this process, this journey, y'all need to go back and watch, just watch the playlist, my adoption journey, because it's been a roller coaster. So um, I'm putting everything in storage. I've got so much baby stuff, so much baby stuff, clothes. Uh, I've literally got diapers over here from Kudos because they wanted to do a partnership thing, a month worth of diapers, because there was a child that they were gonna be, that was gonna be coming to me a newborn, two days old, and she never showed up. Watch the last video because I talked about that. Um, so that came, I've got those. I've got the high chair or the booster seat. I've got not one stroller, but uh, no, one stroller here, another stroller in my car. I've got a car seat in my car, a car seat at Alex's house. I've got over here the, boom. I've got the crib that baby S was in. I've got this four moms bassinet that they reached out to me to do a promo for. I never ended up doing it because, well, I didn't have a child to do it with and it just didn't work out. Um, I've got a pack and play. I've got toys. I've got baby products out the wazoo, all kinds of stuff and no baby. <laughs> so as I go on this journey, I realize that I want, uh, I don't know if I want to just clear out my space I don't know if I want to first start. I don't know what it is. What I do know is that I've got all this stuff here and when a baby is here, I will be ready. My place is a one bedroom apartment. It's not huge. I don't have much closet space. So I want. I decided I'm just gonna go get a public storage unit and put it all in there and keep it in there until the baby is here. Um, by the time a baby is born, gosh, this is crazy to say, by the time a baby is born, I probably won't even be living here anyway. I'll probably be in a two bedroom or something like that. So um, that's what I'm doing today. That's, man, this has been crazy. This has been absolutely crazy. I'm smelling these flowers right here because these smell amazing. And when I went to Paris last week, or by the time this comes out, it'll probably be two or three weeks, but went to Paris and Alex, bought me flowers in Paris and it was beautiful and he gave me them in front of the Notre Dame and it was awesome. So I took some of the flowers. I couldn't take the whole bouquet home because it was too much. So I took some of the flowers, I put them in my suitcase and they did great across the world. And I'm gonna try and propagate some of them and create a whole new bouquet of them. So he's really sweet and I lucked out. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm just going into public storage. <sighs> Let's do this. I, I'm gonna try and borrow Alex's car because I just have a four door car um, and the crib's not gonna fit in there. The best, it's gonna be hard to fit everything. So I'm gonna put the little things and then maybe Alex, cause he has an SUV, would let me take his car tonight or tomorrow or something and get the bigger things with me. Um, look, this is another thing, this thing right here. Like, oh, there, there's literally baby stuff everywhere that I even forget that I have. So it all, it's all gotta be put away. It's all gotta, all gotta be put up until I'm ready to take it out. All right, let's do this. Let's go. You know, it's crazy because like this whole thing here is full of, literally full of bottles. This whole trash bag full of bottles and like baby, containers to hold food um, and then I have this baby like this is like a baby called a baby cook so that was you know when babies gotten older and they're eating well around this time if I still had baby s he would be kind of transitioning over to some of these things I have the baby Brezza here um, like and then I've got all of this formula like this is about 
three to five hundred dollars worth of formula right here so you, you never know anyway there's just so much stuff i've got like toys that people had given me like they never opened with their kids so they just gave them to me that I, I keep finding more and more things i hope i have a big enough storage for all this stuff but um i'm about to head out i'm gonna go drop off what i can in my car tomorrow i'll take alex's car and do the bigger things so let's let's get out of here and let's go do that Okay, so I've got my whole car packed. Uh, car seat, play stuff, just a bunch of stuff. And the trunk is also packed full as well. Um, I headed down the street, it's about 10 minutes from my house to public storage. I'm going to put all this stuff in the storage and then be done for today. I have a little bit of things left in my house, which I'll do tomorrow. Um, but I'm tired, like, we just, literally, I've only been back in the country for two days, I think, two and a half days. I'm tired and I'm hungry. Um, I need to go, I'm gonna go grocery shopping after this, so. That's that. I will say this, it is, <laughs> it's a little bit sad to do this. Um, there was one point where I felt like, like, I told myself a lie, like, Oh, see, you're, you're a failure. You're packing it all up. You failed. I'm just, I'm a human being. Like, I, sometimes we think like this. Sometimes, sometimes that crap happens to us. But I was like, no, that's, that's not true. That's evilness getting in your head. Um, but it does make me think of, like, baby S a lot and all of the things that all of this was for him he's now six and a half months old and i still haven't heard from him well i haven't heard from the foster mom i did reach out to her today and i left her message um maybe she'll respond to it but i'm also super i am i do feel really detached i feel like 90 percent detached from from hearing back about him. <clears throat> Cause I gotta move on, right? But it does bring up that little man. And then on the plane ride home, so for 13 hours from, we took a plane from Paris to Istanbul and Turkey. And then we took a plane from Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey to um, LAX. And for 13 hours on that second flight, I was sitting next to this woman from Iraq and her son, his name was Danny, and he was a year old and God, he reminded me of baby S so much and I got to tell her about him and it was just so beautiful. It, at some times, like the little baby was sitting in her lap and he would like put his little hand on my leg and things like that. It was just, it brought, it just, it made me feel good. It didn't make me feel any sadness. It just made me feel good and I was just like, that's sweet. and. I can't wait to have a baby and all those things. And, and then it made me think about baby S and stuff. And so anyway, but I'm actually not far, seven minutes away. So I will get this stuff into storage. And after this, it's, it's videos of this journey and going through the surrogacy process and IVF and, you know, doing everything I gotta do to make this dream a reality. And if you guys are interested in helping, please, please think about the GoFundMe page and 
please donate anything you can, a dollar, five dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever you can do. Um, I'm contributing my own money, obviously, and working hard to make this happen. And I have two houses I'm showing this week. Uh, another one I'm about to put on, on the market for someone. And all of these funds are going to bills and also big chunks of it are going to, you know, making this dream a reality. But it is a very expensive process and you're not guaranteed to, for that first round to, to go through. So something that is $58,000 can easily turn out to be 60, 70, $80,000. So it just depends on how many tries it takes. So if you found this channel to be, I don't know, if you've liked it, maybe you'll feel motivated or anything that you want to help out in the, the least or greatest amount that you can. So anyway, I'm going to get off of here and I'm almost to the public storage. I love you guys. So I got to <laughs> the public storage and my unit, well, it is all the way at the top of this. So basically, I have to get a ladder every time because I got the smallest one because I don't have that much stuff. I didn't want to spend a lot of money. <laughs> oh. But, you know, it is what it is because the good thing is like, I don't plan to come to this unit much at all. So I'm just gonna suck it up. This is what I got. This is what I'm gonna use. All right, time to get the stuff out of the car. Everything minus the crib, the bassinet, um, and maybe a couple more things is in here. Those I'll get tomorrow. Alex, is, Alex said, I gotta lock it, what am I doing? Alex said I could use his car tomorrow, the SUV. Um, but it's hot in here and I'm tired. <sighs> Time to go home. Friends, 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 friends. I'm getting old, I'm just gonna say, because this car is packed. He's got an SUV that is packed with baby stuff. And like, my car was packed with baby stuff. And this is the third day. Yesterday I packed this car up and I was so tired that like, I couldn't even unload it. I had to be like, Alex, can I please do it tomorrow? And just leave the car stuff in your car because I was so, exhausted but I will also say this is the week after traveling to Paris for over a week uh, so I think I'm still adjusting to time and everything like that I'm just like tired but okay now I'm on the way to the, the public storage place I'm gonna put all this away and bring his car back and then everything is locked up until baby arrives so I've been chatting with the surrogacy place. There are two different sur surrogacy places. I am going to keep this private. I don't want people to know who I'm going through because I need some sense of autonomy and privacy. Well, I will say they are both based out of Cancun. Um, I'll do another video about all of this because Cancun is, if I haven't done the video already. So if I have, well then I'm putting it up here or there, whichever side. But if I haven't, I will do that. Um, but basically it's out of Cancun and I don't remember anything else I was gonna say because I'm exhausted, but I'm almost there and we're gonna get this done. 
Um, but I'm excited. Oh, I talked to the people today. <laughs> uh, I have to get some testing done. Uh, you have to do like a semen analysis. You have to get all these STD testing done. These things are happening next week. I'm sure I will have video of all of it. Nothing inappropriate. <laughs> Uh, cause this is just part of the new journey to surrogacy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And if you guys can help with the GoFundMe, please contribute. Links are in the bio. Um, it will mean a lot because this is not a cheap process. Working my butt off to make sales here. And, uh, you also use my savings and things, but I don't have all the funds. Um, but it's beautiful that this can be broken up in stages to get it done. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. All right, look at all of this. How is this possible? How did I have this much stuff? Uh, I hope it all fits in there, honestly. I really do, we'll see. All the way up here, putting this stuff away, and I get a call from Aviva, the agency that calls you for foster kids. And they're like, hey, Kevin, we just got an email from DCFS there. They wanted to know, could you bring in a newborn baby boy? And I'm just like, uh. And I just told him no, because I don't want, like, I don't want to go on the roller coaster. I don't want to say yes and then have what's been happening where, you know, they call me and then the baby never shows up or the baby shows up and then I have to transfer that baby in a couple of months. It's just too much. And this is why I'm doing the surrogacy. This is why I'm going, because I'm just going to do biological child and take that baby home and nobody's going to take that baby from me. And I think down the road, one day, in 10 years maybe, I will bring in foster kids, but I think I wanna do it for older children. I wanna foster teenage children and kind of give them a new lease on life. But that's at a later point in life. Um, but when they call, man, it's, oh, you know, you can't help but think like, maybe I should say yes. Maybe I should pull all of this stuff out of storage and stop putting this stuff down here in storage and say yes. But then it's like, why? For another five month thing? It's too much, it's too much for me. Anyway, I wanted to share that. That is it. I am done. Everything's packed away. Onward with this journey. Part of me is like, why did they call me? Part of me is like, Call me when you have a child you want me to adopt. Like, adopt. But I need to get that out of my head. Stay the course. Service <laughs> is what it's, what I'm doing. It's what I'm, what I'm doing. So, it is hot. I think it's like 90 plus degrees in LA right now. I'm getting out of here, going back to Alex's house, drop off his car, do some work. And we're all going out tonight to do karaoke. <laughs> Maybe I'll put some video in, in, of that in here. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. Bye.